Hi, I'm Lyndon Bauer. I'm a general practitioner working on the Central Coast. I've been interested in helping people quit smoking for just on 30 years now. And many of my patients now are asking about e-cigarettes and today I hope to be able to tell you some of the answers. It took 40 years of widespread population smoking to firmly establish tobacco as a real problem. It's going to take a long time to be sure about e-cigarettes. But the smoke itself isn't the whole story. Part of the problem is the nicotine drives people to use their product many times each day, as much as one third of all waking hours, and then to go on using it for many decades. We know that e-cigarettes do contain things like formaldehyde, heavy metals, acetaldehyde, all of which are implicated as carcinogens. They're bathing a very sensitive organ for many decades, many times a day, in these chemicals. We won't know for many years what the outcome of that is, but I leave you to draw your own conclusions. I was very interested in e-cigarettes in the beginning as an aid to helping people quit smoking. And some of the evidence in the beginning suggested that they might, but unfortunately the bigger trials now are suggesting that they don't. In fact, people taking up e-cigarettes generally develop a dual dependency and whilst they do use e-cigarettes, they also go back to smoking quite a lot. The quit rate on e-cigarettes is no better than the quit rate in people smoking. So they're not helping people to quit smoking. If they can possibly quit nicotine, that is what we need to aim for. Many of my patients are confused between the differences between e-cigarettes and nicotine replacement therapy. Um, and some of them feel, well, how are they different? Well, they're very different. Smoking and e-cigarettes deliver their nicotine in surges. Those surges give people a little lift in their mood. Nicotine replacement therapy does not give surges. Basically, it just stays at a very low level that stops people from reaching that point of craving. By not having those multiple surges each day, they're already getting much less nicotine, even in a state where they're not craving. Those little surges promote the dependency. And we know that with nicotine replacement therapy, it will double your quit rate at 12 months. That's not going to happen with e-cigarettes. So nicotine replacement therapy is a way of avoiding withdrawal and yet getting off the cigarettes, off the nicotine addiction. The other issue is, well, with fears about the risk to the lungs, nicotine replacement therapy, even the types that are inhaled, don't reach the lungs. They're absorbed in the upper airways and in the throat. Whereas e-cigarettes are designed to reach the lungs. And that's why the risk is there. There's extensive evidence now that quitting smoking will lead to substantial improvements in depression and anxiety, lasting 12 months or more. Of course, the withdrawal phase needs to be handled well with nicotine replacement therapy. It's unlikely that you'll quit if you continue on with e-cigarettes, so it's much better to focus towards using nicotine replacement therapy to quit smoking to get those mood improvements. On average, we know that smokers are more depressed than non-smokers. We know that smokers do seek out smoking as a solution to their depression, but there's also substantial evidence that the smoking itself is making their depression worse, particularly evidence in young people taking up smoking over time, and that their depression actually comes after they've started smoking. E-cigarettes have been strongly regulated in Australia and I think that's a good decision. In other countries overseas where they haven't been so strongly regulated, they've seen an enormous uptake in young people and we know that nicotine in e-cigarettes is very addictive and that many of those young people then go on to smoking cigarettes that they may never have done otherwise. I think it's really wise that countries do regulate e-cigarettes fairly strongly. Of course, at the moment, we're very concerned about any increased risk factors for COVID-19. Smokers obviously find it hard to wear a mask. They touch their face over and over. They're touching a device, which they're then putting towards their face. 
Sometimes, unfortunately, they even consider sharing their device with other people and with smoking, sharing lighting equipment. So there's lots of risks for both e-cigarettes and smoking directly for catching COVID-19. If a smoker does unfortunately catch COVID-19, there is evidence that their mortality rate will be substantially higher.